Yo, Elliot, I have some indecision that is driving me nuts in regard to meeting a wife-worthy woman and starting a family. I'm 28 years old in an electrician's apprenticeship, building skills for my career as a tradesman, but very busy with study and working extra to get my basic bills paid. My question is, should I make efforts towards being fruitful and multiplying now? Finding a woman who was willing to have little for some time and build together for the future or finish the apprenticeship, get my finances more stable and then focus on bringing a woman into my life. I appreciate your insights. So one of the things that I've experienced and noticed in my life is that when I have a desire for something, it's not that the desire needs to be uh, reached for or ignored because that which you, that which you, you push away, there was a really good video I saw on Instagram. I'm going to demonstrate. I saw this. He must have been like a Buddhist monk or something like that, but there was, he had a lot of wisdom. He talked about how if, so, if there's something that you desire, there's something that you want, or there's something that you don't want. You, if you try to pull it towards you, say you want this wife, right? You want a wife? You try to pull it towards you, it moves away, right? If I pull this towards me, it moves away. Also, if I say, oh, but I'm, I'm going to ignore this, I'm going to push this down, or I'm going to reject this in my life for a time or whatever, if you push something away, it returns back to you. If you push it away, it comes. So, there's, so the, the, the place to be is in equanimity, is not to push or not to pull, but to be open. And so having, I don't want to say have no intention, but what I've experienced in my life is that if I notice an intention and I allow it and be grateful for it, then in its own time, in its own way, God delivers it into my life. Mainly because as I know about myself, I wasn't ready for it when I wanted it. So for example, I'm living on this ranch. I have lots of acres here and my family is set away and we're homeschooling. I wanted this a long time ago. I was 24 and I remember wanting this. Before it was even like a cool thing, I, I met the Amish and I was like, I want to live like I'm Amish. And I sat with that. There was a desire. I could have reached for it or I could have said, no, that could never happen. I'm going to reject it because I can't have it, sour grapes. But in a way, I just allowed it and when I was in my most allowing state, God literally delivered it into my life with ease, with ease. This is, this is new age stuff. And I mingle new age with Catholicism because there, there, there are truths. Jesus even says, knock and you, how does he say it? Knock and you, it will be answered. Knock and, you know, and, and here, ask, ask and you will receive. He doesn't say ask and strive and cry and reach. He doesn't say ask and then get upset and have uh, sour grapes and push away. He says ask and you will receive. But to be receiving means to be receptive. To receive something means to be receptive. And you're in your most receptive state when you are grateful. Gratitude is the most open, open way that we can be right you open and you you're in a position of receptivity begin being grateful for what you do have like your job be grateful for your studies be grateful for your being able to pay off your bills and be grateful for the desire even to find a wife and and be grateful as if she's already here right be grateful as if she is on her way. In fact, there's a prayer. I'm going to look it up right now. I'm in a praying, praying mood. I, pr I taught this prayer to my uh, Get the Girl for Life students when I did that over the summer. It's a, it's a prayer for a spouse. Prayer for a good wife or a husband. Let me see if this is one. Look up Catholic prayers, bro. There's a bunch of different ones I've seen. 
but here's one. It's short. I'll pray this for you and then we'll leave. Oh, Jesus, lover of the young and dearest friend I have, in all confidence, I open my heart to you to beg your light and assistance in the important task of planning my future. Give me the light of your grace that I may decide wisely concerning the person who is to be my partner through life. Dearest Jesus, send me such a one whom in your divine wisdom you judge best suited to be united with me in marriage. May her character reflect some of your traits and uh, may the traits of your sacred heart. May she be upright, loyal, pure, sincere, and noble, so that with united efforts and with pure and unselfish love, we may both strive to perfect ourselves in soul and body, as well as with the children it may please you to entrust to our care. Bless our friendship before marriage, that sin may have no part of it. May our mutual love bind us so closely that our future home may be most like your own in Nazareth. So there was that. Oh, seeking, those seeking a spouse. So there's a novena. A novena is where you pray, I think, for nine days. Novena prayer for those seeking a spouse. Let's see if I could read this one. Here's another one. So this is a novena. Pray this for nine days. Loving Father, you know that the deepest desire of my heart is to meet someone that I can share my life with. I trust in your loving plan for me, and I ask that I might meet someone soon, or I might meet soon the person that you have prepared for me. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, open my heart and mind so that I may recognize my soulmate. Remove any obstacles that may be in the way of this happy encounter, so that I might find a new sense of wholeness, joy, and peace. Give me the grace, too, to know and accept if you have another plan for my life. I surrender my past, present, and future into the tender heart of your Son, Jesus, confident that my prayer will be heard and answered. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you. St. Valentine, pray for me. I like that one. That's what I would probably pray. I'm going to put this one in the chat. Pray a novena. I know you're Catholic. That's why I'm telling you this. And if you're not Catholic, you can pray a novena anyway. A nine days of prayer that opens you up to the grace of God. Why not? It's pretty cool.